One of the most common types of light is the dome light, with many scenes being primarily lit through a high dynamic range image or HDRI map, and this is usually captured on set and later used for replicating that lighting in your scene when look deving assets or master shot lighting. Many times this HDRI map will get you 70 or 80% of the way to setting up the lighting for your shot, and adding extra lights will further polish the lighting for a beautiful final shot or image. So let's have a look in Solaris and see how we set up and work with a dome light. And so in Solaris, I've created a new still life inspired scene for us to play around with as we continue through these lessons. And it's got a bunch of objects. It's got this sundial here. It's got these candlesticks, these books. And in the middle here, it's got this medieval metal gauntlet, which sits inside of this glass bell jar. And you can see it doesn't look very beautiful or inspiring at the minute. And that's because it doesn't have any lights in our scene. So let's drop in a dome light. And one of the ways we can do that in Solaris is if you want to drop a node in between two nodes, you can simply select the connecting wire. So if I select the wire and I then type dome light, it will then connect it between these two nodes. And you can see here at the top, I've got a sub layer, which is reading in the USD file. And then under it, I've got my render man render settings. So you can see that now we have our dome light and our intensity is set to one, but our color is white by default. So what this is doing is it's surrounding our entire scene with a big white bright dome. And so before we add a texture to our dome light, let's just have a quick look and see our familiar USD lighting parameters. So here we have our intensity and exposure, and then we have our color, and then down here we have our diffuse and specular multipliers. But this texture input, this is really where the magic happens. And so if I click on this icon here, I can read in an HDRI map. And because we want to read in a .tex file, by default, this wildcard here doesn't show them. So if we just type star, then we'll see this HDRI appear in this folder. So we select the texture we want to use and then press accept. And now we've applied a map to our dome light, which is now illuminating our scene. And so it looks very dark to start with. So let's increase our intensity to six. And let's also go up on the exposure by say two. And now what we're starting to see is we're illuminating our scene with our HDRI map. Now I'm just going to rotate the camera a little bit so I can look at the handles on the dome light. So I can rotate the dome light in a number of ways. One is I can rotate it here under the transform tab and middle mouse and then scroll and then that starts to rotate the dome light. Or what I can do is I can select the dome light, hover over the viewport and press the enter key. And now this will bring up the manipulators and then I can then control the rotation of the dome light that way. And so like we've seen in previous lessons, there's a number of extra parameters that we can play around with. So we can adjust the diffuse multiplier. So this dome light is only emitting a specular light. So that's how that looks. And if I put that back to one, we can also do the same with the specular multiplier. We can turn it off so that this dome light is only emitting diffuse light. And again, this becomes very useful at times when you're trying to really craft and refine the lighting in your scene. So again, let's put that back to one. So there's a couple of other options I just want to show you that sit under the Render Man tab. And the first one here is Map Saturation. And if we go to Set or Create, we can actually control the saturation of our HDRI image. And this is quite useful when you want to desaturate an HDRI image that you've got, but you still want to retain all of that high dynamic range information that sits within it. Here we've knocked all the saturation out. And this option here allows you to control the gamma of your map. And then also down here, we have our visible in refraction. So if we turn that on by going to set or create, we can now control it. Now, if I turn it off, you're not going to see much difference because we have this wall that is actually blocking the dome light behind it. So if this wall wasn't here and we could actually see the dome light being refracted inside of the glass object, this is how you can control that by turning this on or off. So before we finish this lesson, I just wanted to show you one other way that we can work with dome lights and create a nice little look dev setup. So you can see here that I've got this new node and it's called look dev HDRI and I created it myself out of a sub network. And so let me show you what happens. So if I double click it and dive inside of it and if I make it full screen so you can see. Now what this is doing is I have my input and inside of here I have a bunch of dome lights. So I've got a sunlight, I've got an overcast, I've got a studio, I've got the Pixar atrium, and I've got a bunch of others. And I've also got here a little lighting setup that I've got a dome light and I've got a few extra rec lights as well. 
Now, at the bottom here, I've got a switch, and I've also got a transform, which allows me to rotate the dome lights. And I've promoted a bunch of these parameters. So if we dive back up to the top and have a look at the parameters of this node, I can control the switch, which switches between the HDRIs, and I can also control the rotation as well. And so what this allows me to do is rather than have a bunch of dome lights that sit inside the main stage, I've got one neat little sub-network that houses all of my LookDev dome lights inside of it. And I can use this parameter to switch between them. So we can go from one to two, and then we can then go through them. So this is a cloudy day, and then I can have a look at what it looks like inside of a studio setup. And then I can then have a look at what it looks like inside the Pixar atrium. And you can see here that inside of the dome light within the sub network, I've desaturated it. And so this is quite a handy little tool. And of course, then here I can rotate it. So if I go back, say I go to number eight, which is the outside of Pixar, I can now start to rotate this dome light as well to see what it looks like as I rotate the dome light. And so even though this lesson was quite short, there's still a number of powerful and useful features that you can use within the dome light. <laughs>